Hi, I'm Cody Dagalorians. And I'm Alex Giannini, and we're the program managers at the Westport Library. And this is 10 Questions With, short video interviews with some of our favorite authors while they and we are stuck at home. These 10 questions are for Grady Hendricks. Say hi, Grady. How you doing? So Grady joined us in 2019 for StoryFest, uh, and he is the Bram Stoker award-winning author of Paperbacks from Hell, Horror Store, which is in my other bookcase in my other room, <laughs> My Best Friend's Exorcism, which is right here, uh, and We Sold Our Souls, and uh, his new book, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Vampire Slaying, is out right now, so you should go get that now. This is the perfect quarantine read. So welcome, Grady. Thanks for having me, man. So what project of yours should people grab while they are stuck at home? Of mine? They should be the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Oh my God, I happen to have a copy right here. It's easy, it's convenient. These pages are good for burning in case electricity runs out. We enter a sort of dystopian situation. Plus, it's relatively heavy and can be used to stun or even kill a uh, home invader if they're small enough. How about a, a go-to book by somebody else, either to use as an object, as a, as a weapon or not? Yeah, well, you know, one thing that's really bummed me out recently is I discovered that there are people who haven't read Shirley Jackson. And Shirley Jackson is one of the great authors of the 20th century and she wrote horror you know we've always lived i mean we've always lived in the castle is phenomenal uh, haunting of hill house but what a lot of people don't read of hers are her comedies she wrote two memoirs uh, about raising her kids and and trying to be a mom while she's also one of the most important authors of the 20th century uh, life among the savages and raising demons and these are really really funny they're just a series of essays both of them and she's such a precise writer that her comedy is fried gold. So if you need something right now, I think Overdrive carries it the last time I checked, uh, at least New York Public Library. Um, Shirley Jackson's Life Among the Savages and Raising Demons are a one-two punch of pure shut-in joy. What about a go-to album right now? So this is gonna sound really pretentious, but, um, I've been listening less to albums right now and more to sort of individual songs. And I'm a big classical, I'm not a big, I'm a amateur classical music fan. And right now, I mean, I love pop, but like, I want something more. And so a lot of the stuff I like is modern, minimalist kind of music, Philip Glass, Steve Reich, Vim Mertens. And that feels very like claustrophobic right now and, and kind of like getting punched in the ears over and over again. And so I've been trying to sort of expand out and listen to a lot of the older classical composers. And, and, and I've been trying to avoid, because I'm, I'm, I'm you know, this isn't exactly a, a genre I'm really super versed in. I've been trying to avoid the cliched pieces, you know, like Ride of the Valkyries and stuff like that, because I'm like, uh, I got good taste here. But today, I had to go down to my wife's restaurant, which she had to close a couple of weeks ago and, and lay off all our employees. And we're cleaning out the walk-in and, and there's, a, there's a, a soup kitchen we work with. They're taking all our stuff. And I was walking home and I was walking up the Bowery and I put on uh, Mozart's overture to the Marriage of Figaro. And it was so fantastic. It was like, that piece is like a puppy that wants to get somewhere and just so excited it keeps falling all over itself. It's just this sort of pell-mell rush to like joy and optimism and happiness. And all around me, I was passing as I walked up the Bowery, place after place that was shuttered and closed, bars I've gone to, restaurants I've gone to, friends, businesses. And this contrast between this absolutely optimistic ecstatic piece of music and what was all around me i i hate to sound like a big baby i just started to cry and i was so overwhelmed and i was so grateful for that because i right now i feel numb most of the time like and and i'm refreshing my news feeds and i'm i'm looking at twitter and i'm, I'm doing what everyone's doing and i started to feel really numb and really helpless you know 500 people more than are going to die in new york today and I can't, no one can do anything about it. And it was this feeling of just being overwhelmed by an emotion that wasn't despair. I was so grateful for it. And 
the fact that it's an overture and so it feels like a curtain going up and something beginning rather than what's around us it feels like a curtain coming down and something ending and it it really made me realize that we are so much bigger than right now and it was such a great moment for me and so i really encourage people if you're if, if i know classical music's weird and it seems very pretentious and elitist but um, you know, there's a great podcast called The Open Ears Project, where someone like like Alec Baldwin or Witten Marseille or or Ian McEwen or or uh, Tom Huddleston, they'll just talk about a piece of classical music and what it means to them for a few minutes, and then play it, and it gives you this emotional context that really lets you put it somewhere. So it's really great. But that that's what's working for me right now. How about on the uh, the video end? Any uh, a go to movie or maybe a TV show that you're binging? Well. It's Jackie Chan's birthday today, April 7th. And you know, Jackie Chan's been my guy for years. And I know politically right now, I don't quite get on board with the Jackie Chan train, but he's brought me so much joy over the years. And so I would encourage everyone to go watch Police Story 1 and 2. I wish Project A 1 and 2 were out there and easy to get at, but they're not. But um, the Criterion Channel, which I think is just criterionchannel.org, has Police Story 1 and 2 streaming. You sign up, you get 14 days for free, and I think it's $10 a month after that. But they're the movies presented the way they're supposed to be presented, the way Jackie Chan made them, uncut, original language, widescreen, and nothing will bring you more joy than seeing Jackie Chan defy common sense, logic, and gravity all at once in these movies. What about a go-to beverage right now? Gin. Just gin. The more of it, the better. <laughs> How about a, uh, a go-to work-from-home outfit? And I feel like if you say anything other than a three-piece suit, you're lying. Yeah, no, I, you know, one of the things I've always done, because uh, I always work from home, I have an office, but, um, I put on a suit in the mornings. I go to work. I, you know, I punch a clock. So it's been really nice to just put on the suit every day. I put on my uniform. I go to work. It, e even if I'm not technically working all day and I spend a lot of time just clicking refresh, it's, uh, it, it feels better when I take my pants off at the end of the day to have pants to take off. What about a go-to place you'd rather be right now? I'd rather be on my book tour. You know, it's been... I, I think everyone's making this big difference between postponed versus canceled. My book tour is canceled. Uh, I'm hoping to redo it in the fall, but like it's, it's dead as disco right this minute. And I love book tours. I love going places. I love meeting people. I love being at libraries, being at bookstores, seeing people in like Ohio and Oklahoma who give a shit about books enough to leave their comfortable house on a Thursday or Friday night and come see some yachts, talk to them about vampires. Like, it's so much fun. I'd, I'd rather be there, to be honest. No offense to you guys. How about, how about a go-to time waster, guilty pleasure or otherwise? Well, right now I'm trying to work on a podcast and um, I took a, I, I spent three years in university studying audio engineering and sound engineering. And the day I graduated, I went to turn in my ID and my, my rental privileges to the cage where you got your equipment. And, and I'd spent the whole time working for years on these reel to reel quarter inch machines and using a razor blade to edit and all this. And they're taking all these reel to reel Otaris out and I'm turning my, I'm like, what's going on? Are you guys moving? They're like, oh no, we got all this digital stuff in. And like that everything I'd learned was completely obsolete, like literally obsolete. Um, no one, the equipment I learned on is a antique museum piece right now. Um, so it's been really cool to have the time to play around with the digital tools. I haven't had time yet. Apparently it takes, you know, a pandemic to, to free up some time. So that's what I've been doing. And it really is a time waster. No one's ever going to hear this thing, but it's been fun to do. Who's a go-to person you'd like to hear answer this set of questions? Um, I would love to hear it from any RN working at any hospital right now. Doctors are great. Doctors are cool. They get all the glory, man. Nurses, they're the ones taking the hits. I want to know what they're listening to. I want to know what they're reading. I, I want to know what's, what's going on with them and, and kind of make sure they're okay. How about a, a go-to nostalgia bomb that brings you to your happy place? 
So I've got two nostalgia bombs. Um, one is a book and one's a movie. And the book is The Tribe by Barry Wood. I'm a sucker for that sort of gritty New York City, 70s, early 80s atmosphere, you know, uh, the Serpico thing, Dog Day Afternoon, Fort Apache, the Bronx, um, even though it's not New York, like Hill Street Blues. Um, I just love that. And uh, Barry Wood is his author who wrote this big, fat, juicy novel. Uh, lots of characters, lots of plot lines, set in New York in 1980, I believe. Um, but it's also about a golem that sort of goes berserk and is killing people. And it's fabulous. Like, I find a lot of contemporary fiction, it's good, but right now a lot of it's very interior, a lot of it's very first person, a lot of it's about one man teaching English in a small graduate department in western Tennessee. And I, I want bigger. And so this satisfies my New York City in the 70s Jones. It satisfies my bigger Jones. And it satisfies sort of my, my, uh, my Gollum Jones. Um, so The Tribe by Barry Wood. And then my movie one is The Wind and the Lion, which is, I believe, in late 70s, early 80s. Uh, John Milius made it uh, right after Conan, no, right before Conan the Barbarian and Red Dawn. And it is basically based on a true story where a Bedouin, in pre-World War I, a Bedouin prince in Morocco um, abducted an American woman to use as a bargaining chip as uh, the great powers are fighting over Morocco um, right before World War I started. And this turns it into Candace Bergen getting abducted by Sean Connery, who's playing a Bedouin prince in brownface with a full Scottish accent, no attempt to hide it. You got to get past that a little bit. But man, it is horses and, and tribes and fighting and action and adventure. It's really great. And it's also a really sharp critique of American expansionism and capitalism and colonialism. Well, colonialism, not really capitalism. But um, and it's also surprisingly culturally sensitive. I mean, it's the first time in a movie I've seen a full-on Muslim dude as the romantic lead where his faith is part of his heroism. And it's, and it's also people getting stabbed with swords and shot in the face with shotguns. It is, oh, and Teddy Roosevelt punching uh, people in the face a lot. It is really fabulous. So if people want to find you online, where can they find you? Uh, you know, my stupid website is gradyhendricks.com. It's got links to all my dumb social media. If this podcast ever comes out, my, if I ever disgorge this thing from an orifice, it will be there. Uh, but yeah, gradyhendricks.com. Awesome. Well, hey, Grady, thank you so much uh, for taking some time to answer these uh, silly questions. Oh, Us. dude, thanks for having me. Uh, and happy book birthday to the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Oh, my book baby. <laughs> If you want to rewatch this video or check out any of our others in the 10 Questions series, you can head over to the Westport Library's website at westportlibrary.org to check them all out. Uh, thanks again, Grady. Thank you, guys.